Hello students! Welcome back to our science video. For today, we will cover the topic about chemical bonding. At the end of this lesson, learners are expected to explain and differentiate the three different types of chemical bonding such as metallic, ionic, and covalent. To start this lesson, let's define chemical bonding. A chemical bond is a lasting attraction between atoms, ions, or molecules that enables the formation of chemical compounds. The bond may result from the electrostatic force of attraction between oppositely charged ions as in ionic bonds or through the sharing of electrons as in covalent bonds. But what determines if an atom will bond with another atom? The number of electrons in the outermost shell of a particular atom determines its reactivity or tendency to form chemical bonds with other atoms. This outermost shell is known as the valence shell, and the electrons found in it are called valence electrons. Atoms combined by transferring of electrons, known as ionic bonds, it can also be through sharing of electrons, known as covalent bonds, or by overlapping of orbitals, known to be as metallic bonding. In this lesson, let's focus first with metallic bonding. Metallic bonding results from the combining of positive cations and negative electrons wherein there is a strong attraction between the two charges. In metallic bonds, the valence electrons from the S and P orbitals of the interacting metal atoms delocalize. That is to say, instead of orbiting their respective metal atoms, they form a sea of electrons that surrounds the positively charged atomic nuclei of the interacting metal ions. As you can see in both figures, metal atom is stationary, while electrons can freely move. It is also the reason why metals can easily conduct heat and electricity. But what are the other properties of metals? Based on the table, the different properties of metals are luster, hardness, malleability, ductility, conductivity, density, and tensile strength. Tungsten has a very high melting point of 3,410 degrees Celsius. Hence, it's used in filaments of light bulbs. It has the greatest tensile strength out of all the metals. Since metals have high tensile strength, they are also used in constructing bridges and buildings. Metals have high thermal and electrical conductivities. Electrical wires are made of copper and high-tension wires are made of aluminum, while most of cooking pans are made of metals. Solid metals are malleable, or they can be made into flat sheets, or they can also be ductile, they can be drawn into wires. Gold leaf is a thin sheet of gold that is used to put a gold trim in altars, picture frames, and statues of saints. Metals are lustrous. This property makes metals useful in many decorative items just like jewelry, car trims, and house decors. So what can we infer from these properties of metals about their structure? Metals in the solid state are expected to have the following features. First, their high densities indicate that the atomic particles are closely packed to one another. Second, their high melting points and high tensile strength indicate that the bonding between atoms in metals are very strong. Third, their malleability and ductility tell us that their strong bonds are not destroyed when the metals are pounded and drawn into wires. The bonds continue to stay together. And lastly, their luster indicates that there is a mechanism whereby light is absorbed and readily given off. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe for more science educational videos by clicking the notification bell.